Good morning, everyone. There, you can hear me now. So who went to Macklemore last night? Enjoy it? A little bit early this morning? Yeah. So my name is Greg Noakes. I'm a principal solutions architect with Heroku. And we're going to talk about the new Heroku Architect certification exam. Of course, we have to talk about forward-looking statements. You know, if I do talk about anything that is not GA, uh, don't make a purchasing decision, but do go out and take the test for sure. We're just going to dive right in and kind of go through an overview of the exam, what it covers, and what you're going to need to study to pass the exam. So the Heroku Architect Designer exam is aimed at people who design architectures using Heroku specifically. We don't test on Salesforce architecture or AWS architecture or anything else. We do ask questions around how to integrate with those services, but we don't expect you to know anything about those services. It's aimed fully at the tools that Heroku provides. So we, we're going to ask questions about the Heroku platform, about the data options that are on the Heroku platform, the security of the Heroku platform, Heroku Enterprise, how to architect applications, of course, and then some questions about integrating with other systems. So let's dive into each of those test topics. How do you scale an app on Heroku? What tools can you use and what tactics? So I've worked at Heroku for eight years, and I actually wrote this test. So. Um, that's why I'm up here talking about it. But early in my, my career at Heroku, we were approached by a company who wanted to give away a Ford Fusion on the front page of YouTube in a four-hour window. So they're going to run an ad on the front page of YouTube. People would click on it. They'd enter some details. And then at the end of the four hours, they'd give away a new car. If you can imagine the traffic that that would generate, it was insane. So how did we design a solution that would go ahead and be able to handle that traffic, not lose any of the entries, and scale to that? Well, we tested it. We tested it extensively for weeks ahead of time. The architecture we, we ended up on was a node front end that talked to a Redis database with a Ruby on Rails back end service that talked to the Redis database and would drain it out as quickly as it could and then put it into a Postgres database for a further analysis. And at that time, Heroku had five different Redis vendors. So we actually went through and tested each individual Redis database for a day at five times the load we expected that it would generate. That way, the day of the event, it was a non-event. It just happened. It scaled. We didn't have to worry about it. We knew exactly what we were going to expect. We knew which Redis, Redis database would perform what the, to the scale that we needed. And the day of the event, we all sat around and congratulated ourselves. So that's, that's how to approach scale on Heroku is pre-testing, open a ticket with support, that sort of thing. Make sure you know what you're getting into. Another thing we're going to ask about on the test is which data tools do you use for which problems? You know, Heroku has three primary data tools that we build ourselves. Heroku Postgres, Heroku Redis now. That would have made that last uh, problem a little bit easier. And Heroku Kafka. And that would have made that last problem a lot easier. So we're going to ask questions about what are common limits around those tools. and when to use them. We're not going to ask questions around things like MySQL on Heroku, even though we do provide it as a third party. So we're only going to ask questions around Heroku provided uh, services. So we're also going to ask a lot of questions about security. What sort of security features does Heroku offer to our customers? Which runtimes offer which security certifications? And you're all aware that there's three runtimes on Heroku, right? There's common runtime, there's private spaces, and there's shield private spaces. 
So which do you deploy for PCI level one, for example? And what is the contract between Heroku and its customers when it comes to security? You know, if you sign a BAA with us, what does that mean? We're definitely going to ask questions about the 12-factor app manifesto, since that was written by the founders of Heroku, and Heroku is designed around enforcing those rules. We're also going to ask a lot of questions from the Dev Center. Why is the 12-factor manifesto important? So early in my, before my career at Heroku, I used to build AWS infrastructure. And yeah, I built a bad copy of Heroku for several companies, um, as anybody ever does when they're building AWS infrastructure. But this one specific company I worked for, I started out with the single artisanal handcrafted server in the sky that the CTO built that had MySQL and and Tomcat and everything running on it. And over about six months, I decoupled that and I built it into a proper scalable infrastructure with load balancers, with web front ends, with an RDS database, all of that. So about six months in, I decided I had four web servers. One of them was still that artisanal handcrafted server and it was performing differently than all the other servers. I decided it was time to go ahead and destroy that and use my scripts to build a new server. So I, I blew it away about two weeks into the month and dropped a new server behind the load balancer. At the end of the month, the accounting department comes to me and says, hey, we're missing one eighth of our billings. I was like, that's a really specific number, but okay, let's look at what's going on. How do you generate your billings? They said, well, you know, Joe over in development made us the script and we run it. I'm like, okay, let's look at the script. The script SSH'd into each individual server and pulled down the Apache logs and parsed the Apache logs looking for how many times each customer's API token was used. Two weeks into the month, I'd blown away one of the servers. I didn't save the Apache logs because, I mean, why would you save the logs for a server that's no longer there? So that is why the 12-factor app is super important because one of the factors of the 12-factor app is logs are streams, not files. You don't leave them on the servers. You don't leave a log file on a dyno or on an EC2 instance. You stream it somewhere else. So that's when I really learned. And I, when I read, first read the 12-factor about six months after that, the 12-factor app, that really impacted me. And I was like, yeah, if I had read this a year ago, my life would have been a lot easier. So we're going to ask a lot of questions around the 12-factor app and, and around the Dev Center, around architecting applications. We're also going to ask questions around integrations. So what is Heroku Connect? How do you use Heroku Connect? Is Heroku, show of hands, is Heroku Connect real-time? Thank you. No, it's not real-time. How do you use Apache Kafka on Heroku? If you have a large infrastructure, how do you interconnect with GCP or Azure or AWS? How do you use all of these tools in a larger architecture? Where does Heroku fit in those architectures? So let's, we've covered all the topics, now let's talk about how you guys can pass this test. First off, you took the first step today. You're here, right? You're part of the Trailblazer community, so congratulations. Give yourself a pat on the back. You've taken the first step. Next is, of course, prepare. So go to the exam guide, and we'll show you a link up to that later. Read it. It has all the Dev Center articles, all of the Trailhead modules, everything you'll need to be successful. Earn badges. So go through that exam guide and go ahead and finish those Trailhead modules. And then, of course, just pass the test. It's easy, right? So I'm going to finish up with a pop quiz. We're going to have two questions here, and then we'll take questions and answers. So first question. And this is indicative of the sort of questions you'll be seeing on the test. Universal Containers is building a new marketing website on Heroku. They want to capture user information on their site 
and have that data flow into Salesforce for follow-up. Who can tell me which Heroku features should an architect recommend to accomplish this? Show of hands. A, Heroku Connect and Heroku Postgres. Perfect. So you just passed one of the 60 questions you'll see on the test. Second question, a client wants to deconstruct a monolithic application into a series of microservices. The microservices require secure and direct peer-to-peer -peer communications. Which Heroku Enterprise features should an architect recommend? Which one? B, Heroku private spaces and internal routing. Exactly. Perfect. So that's two questions out of the way. You only have what? 58 left? <laughs> so the tools, of course, are the exam guide, um, which is on Trailhead. So if you just uh, Google for the Heroku architecture exam, you'll, go ahead, you'll find that. We have a, a trail mix called Prepare for Your Heroku Architecture Credential. Of course, the Dev Center. We all follow Mountjoy's law. Um, if you're not familiar with it, John Mountjoy was the gentleman who built Dev Center when Heroku was first a thing. And we have, inside of Heroku, we have something called Mountjoy's Law, which is, if it's not in Dev Center, it's not really a product. So go ahead and read the Dev Center. It is the Bible for this test. And then, of course, 12factor.net for those 12 rules of building applications anywhere, but specifically on Heroku. So good luck. Go take the test. And if you do pass it, or when you do pass it, shoot me a tweet and uh, let me know. I'd be super excited to learn uh, that you passed it. So thank you, and any questions? Any specific questions about the test? No? Question, question. Thank you, yeah. Good luck on the test.